Hello. Hi there. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, table. Seems like we're having a small group today. Um, I think the whole the whole it's it's king's day here so we're setting the rating the king which means it's a national holiday so in the in the netherlands uh it's a it's a day off um let me see all right i think we can just get started um Maybe we have a light agenda for today as we have a small group and I don't know if there's a lot to discuss, but uh, let's just dive in and then, um, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, so welcome everyone to the AFJ working group call April 27th. Uh, I need to remember you to abide by the IBLEDGE code of conduct and the antitrust policy. Um, is there anyone new here today? I think Alexander, have you been at the AFJ call before? Yeah, yeah. I'm from DSR. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah. I, I knew there were Alexanders, but I, I didn't fully you multiple your last name. Multiple uh, Alexanders. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a bit hard to tell which uh which one is which. Cool. Yeah, I think uh, our last names are virtually uh, the same for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um okay. Um so um for today we can do some status updates yeah is there anything anyone wants to report on um from these things i think i have a question about uh shared migration uh, about our by fault migration to shared components pull request yeah. so yeah and the question is that uh, i actually uh, cloned uh, this branch uh, done some testing and also I'm wondering, uh, so in areas by fault, recently uh, community added uh, verifier, verifier capabilities. Uh, and uh, as far as I saw, uh, the most of the implementation depends on India SDK, or at least uh, its API. So uh, uh, do we expect some issues with migrating this functionality to shared components or everything should be fine? I think it should be fine. I've been working on it today uh, mm. because I was pulling in main and there were a lot of things changed. Um, uh, but I updated it all. I haven't been able to test it yet, uh, but I have like a version, working version of main that runs and can receive credential. I I, I haven't fully been able to uh, test out the verifier capability. So I just like fix the code um, because I didn't have two devices at hand. Um, 
but I think it should just work fine. There were some imports from like the Indie SDK and Indie SDK React Native, but that were mostly types. And I just updated those two types from uh, other packages now. Yeah, got it. Thanks. So yeah, it seems that API is compatible. So yeah, I was just wondering about that. Yeah, yeah, I generalized it a bit because it was focused on Indie and now we just have like Anon creds. Um, so it should also work with um, the like the new Anon creds um, um, stuff in, in addition to the Indie uh, stuff. Yeah, great. Sounds great. And actually, I don't know if you guys uh, know. Uh, so I'm wondering what is the minimal support version uh, for shared components for iOS? Uh, for example, I just tried to uh, create a bundle uh, with these packages, and uh, it seems that uh, info files do not have this information, and I checked it in bundles, it says something like 16.2. Well, yeah, I see. But in, yeah, so I just got some uh, errors with bundling this uh, build uh, targeting iOS 12. So I'm just wondering, does anybody tried it before me to I bundle some application? We tried it at some point and set it to 12, but we have like the three shared component libraries and, and it's sometimes like updating a Rust version or something can suddenly break stuff. Um, so, um, yeah, we would need to look into it again. Uh, maybe if you can open an issue in, in like the repos of what's happening in which version, um, mm -hmm. then we can try to, to fix that. It has worked in 12 at some point. Yeah, it actually works in uh, development build. So if I just run uh, the app, uh locally on the device uh, it's runs without issues but uh if i just trying to create a bundle and validate it in xcode it says that uh all, uh, all shared libraries so anon creates uh areas ascar and individr uh, it just says that uh the, 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 they do not support uh, my target version which is 12. well i i just need to investigate uh, further i think and yeah, if I generalize some info, I will just create an issue then. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a while since we, we tested it. So uh, uh, that would be good. Does it mention like which version it does support or? No, actually no. So the first thing that uh, Xcode was complaining about, uh, no minimal OS version specified in info per list files. But uh, yeah, after I edited it, it was not resolved. And it seems that uh, somehow uh, in bundles itself, uh, it just says to me that uh, it requires 16.2 version. I haven't tested it with 16.2. For example, after the call, I, I think I will do that. And uh, if I get a more clear understanding of what's going on, yeah, I will create an issue. OK, cool. Does the CI Clasio, does the CI of by default build the app for production? Or I think there was something set up like that, right? Or actually let me double check quickly. I don't remember if it built a debug release or it was a production release. Okay. Yeah. Um that would be interesting to know because I think then that should also break if it makes a production uh, build. I do know we had like there was a small issue in Bifold um, where I think the target in Bifold is set to iOS 10 currently, and this mentions 12, but actually it it throw, it like it gives a warning that hey uh, your dependencies have um, iOS 12. Um, but it runs fine. Um, um, mm -hmm. I think that's the case uh, in my situation too, because uh, build itself is uh, successful. But validations that, uh, for example, Xcode uh, does uh, to sign the bundle 
for example, to upload it for the test flight and so on. Validation says that uh, there is an issue with uh, specification of versions, maybe. Maybe in runtime, it's uh, all fine at all. But uh, yeah, maybe it's a specific problem with uh, Apple validation. Okay, yeah, would be good to look into. I think we're we're not really using any fancy things in any of these wrappers. Um, so yeah, should be able to support mm -hmm. the old version. Thanks. Yeah, and maybe another issue that I saw recently. So I was trying to install, uh, for example, Ares Ascar package for Node.js on Windows. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems that uh, it just uh, tries to download uh, a binary from GitHub releases. And in GitHub releases, it uh, has a name, something like uh, Windows uh, uh, X86-64. Uh, but uh, in runtime, when it tries to do install, it takes a uh, platform name from Node. And platform name for Node is actually Win32, Win not full Windows. And it says not found in this case yeah so we have this uh yeah. yeah we don't have like an uh an um like we only have an x86 build for windows um are you on x86 um no i actually on uh x64 but uh, i think the problem is uh platform name not architecture yeah, yeah. we have a... you... yeah right. because uh, i think that the when when no uh, the, the the arch script my thing <laughs> you remember uh, expects i think a windows uh, yeah i mean it ta it takes the, the the platform name from node.js and it seems that node node.js is is uh, is uh, returning a win32 instead yeah. of windows as exactly a, a, as a, so maybe we can we can yeah we we can either change the, the script or change the name of the file of the artifact we are generating in ASCAR. So instead, instead of calling it uh, uh, ASCAR uh, Windows X86, uh, we, 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 we can just call it uh, ASCAR Win32, I don't know. Yeah, library, so... sorry, the library uh, Win32. Yeah, exactly. So, for example, to install this on Windows, I need to go to packages on and manually change binary name to Windows, and then it works without any issues. Yeah. Um, so, um, a binary uploaded to GitHub release for Windows has. And uh, this means it can download. It, when you install this package um, for Node.js on Windows, uh, is is this also the case for like Ares Oscar or like IndyVDR and Alan Kretzer S? I think only for two of them. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I think maybe for IndyVDR two, mm -hmm. uh, maybe I just uh, haven't installed it in my project. Yeah. Probably yes. Oh, so these are similar. So I think it's uh, highly likely. Um, let me see releases. Where's releases? It's the tags. So we have probably this will have the same issue. Um, and if we look at in the VDR. Um, then we have okay, yeah. So it seems there's it's probably the case for all of them. Uh, yeah, does it make sense for me to create an issue in every repo, or it's not really needed? Yeah, I can create this issue, and I think we can just reuse that for all of them. I think it's quite an easy fix. Um, um, okay, thanks. Um, or like, 
modify the uh, script already used by node gib to uh, i think last time berend had a opinion on how this should happen like he would rather like keep the names in the release in a certain way and, and change the script but uh, i think both will work fine um cool okay thanks for raising this this is like we don't really have a a, a windows uh yeah, I see. It's, we don't test that uh, every day. Ah, okay, I think that's it for me. So, yeah, no more questions from my side. Okay, cool. Thanks for raising. Um, oh, let me add this issue to here. Um, Cool. Um, I can give an update on the like the status of the migration. Is um, I was working on it today. Um, I have updated the pull request with the latest change from main, and that all works. And I just ran the migration from Indy to Ascar, and that also worked. There's only one issue I'm running into, um, and maybe you have some thoughts on it on on what would be a good way to solve it. Is um, we're we're going into the wall like right ahead logging. Um, I think Ariel has also um, run into this, but basically what the wallet does, it it like you have the SQLite database and that's a .db file. And then you have a .db dash wall. Um, and I was just testing it um, um, uh, like to migrate it. And I noticed because I, I, launched the bifold app in like the previous like the main version with afj03 and in the sdk then i filled it with a lot of like credentials and like half finished exchanges just so i can test like if we migrate it can it continue with like sharing the credentials receiving the proof or and whatever but the migration went fine but the oscar wallet was empty while the indie wallet wasn't so i tried uploading the file like to my pc so i can like look in it and 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 what I noticed is that the wallet, the .db file was actually empty. It had just the key and the table structure, but it was empty. And there was a dash wall file that was a lot bigger, um, which um, probably it, it hadn't committed yet. And that's probably because if you suddenly close the app, I think it maybe doesn't get the time to save it. Um, but it seemed like it had stored everything in the in the wall file. Um, so I'm not too sure what to do now because in in how like the migration is implemented is it checks on startup like have we previously used in the SDK and are we now using Oscar? Well, it knows it now using Oscar because in the latest version it will, and then it will do the migration. But that migration is done before the wallet is initialized within the SDK again because we don't have it. And it makes that the um, the wall um, changes don't have effect anymore because we um, copy the database file. Then we do like the Indy to Oscar migration and then we do the AFJ storage update migration. And then it's placed in a different, um, in a different file um, uh, or a different location where Oscar expects it. Um, and even if we were to copy the, the wall file, the structure for Oscar is different. So if we then apply those wall updates, that 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 will break. So somehow we need to first apply those updates to the database before we can migrate. Um, but curious if like what if people have experience with this or like what I think would be a good approach here because otherwise it can mean like now it's just that I opened it for the first time and then added a lot of credentials and, and I, I lose a lot uh, like basically everything in the wallet but I think it could just mean that you may lose some data that hasn't been finalized yet any thoughts my thought is that it's so hard <laughs> it's very this is this yes this is very very complicated to manage because uh, so I'm I'm not very familiar with with the with the NDSDK migration script, but um, but my understanding was that 
the wall, the wall file is mechanism is is made in a way that when you open the database, it will automatically get the, those uh, changes from the wall wall right. Or, or is, is, isn't that the case? I mean, if you because if you open the the database, suppose you copy not only the, 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 the SQLite file, but also the wall file into the destination directory, and you open that DB, wouldn't it take the, the, all the, the, the changes in, from the wall, and then you can uh, simply do the migration from, from there? Or isn't that the case? That, yeah. So yeah, we are now copying the database to a new, like we're copying it to a temp file, uh, a temp location. Uh, yes. And we don't remove the in the SDK database. So if we are going to mess something up, we always have still the backup, but we do the temp and then we do the migration and then we move it to its final place. Um, but yeah, maybe we can try to, I, I hadn't thought of that, that we just like also copy the wall file and then it will write it on open. What I am curious about then is like why, because I added like multiple connections, uh, multiple credentials and the wall file was basically the whole database um and why doesn't it commit the data until the next time i open the wallet yeah i'm not an expert neither on that but but something that something that we should change uh, in the in the wallet management is is the is the, the, the way we, we create the transactions uh, because we are not actually using the uh, uh, transactions in, currently. We are, we are simply creating a, a, a new session which is uh, open the whole EFJ session, let's say. And we never do a, a explicit commit before closing the wallet. So maybe that's one of the reasons why this is happening, and it usually works because, uh, because as you said, the, the the information is there in the wall file, and the next time we open the wallet, the commit will be automatically done by SQLite. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's uh, yeah. I think it's just weird that I thought it was like my, a, my... our issue because we're also having it with Indie SDK now, which may, makes sense maybe because we don't really use transactions with Indie, or maybe we we do maybe with Indie we use like one big session or transaction, and that's the issue. Yes. Yes. And because I, I also in the because. My understanding on how that's work is that we are uh, doing all, all, all the writes are, are, are uh, done on the, on the wall file until a certain point, a, a, a certain amount of uh, data. And this is mainly done in, uh, in order to uh, allow to have multiple readers on the SQLite file. That, 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 that's the reason of, of this wall file actually. Because otherwise you will have the, the file handle uh, uh, locked and, and you, you wouldn't be able to, to access the, the database from, from another thread. Or, or, or that is how it's supposed to, to be. Uh, so maybe we can, we can, do, we can do transactions and, and, and commit explicitly in order to make sure that, uh, that everything is, is in place uh, or I don't know, or maybe we can do that before closing the wallet. Yeah, yeah that might be something we can do that we, it's just like, yeah, it's, it's in a mobile environment, it's quite hard to intercept the closing, but I think you can probably like, uh, you can probably have like a who can like um, get a bit of processing time after the wallet is closed, right? So maybe we need to do some, just try, like we can never be sure, but like, um have some or like at least document how you can like hook into an event from the the native system that the app is going to be shut down and then we close the wallet which will 
would which will commit the data yes yes I, th I think yeah i think i think it's possible to do uh, that th there is an, an event in both maybe Klesh knows more about about this but i think it's possible to to catch i don't know from react native how it works but maybe it's there is some module that handles that and, and we can we can do the closing uh, there they're gracefully uh, uh, closing there Okay. Um, okay, so I'm thinking about is is there a a API call that we need to be call it needs to be called? Does AFJ provides that call? I think it's um the problem what's happening here is in AFJ we open the wallet and I think it, it, apparently it will create write everything to a write to a wall file um with yep. um the in the SDK until the wallet is closed. That's an assumption, I think, but it, it sometimes commits it. Um, and that way it will be committed to the main database before you open it next time, um, um, which we may be able to, like, I think it's more of like, you can just like, if you do agent.shutdown um, on before, like, instead of like just killing the app um, and you may be able to hook into that. Like if there's a close event that you can just call the, uh, Agent dot shutdown uh, method, which will close the wallet and and stop everything. Okay, um, I'm just doing a quick Google search in the meantime, but but everything is telling me that the the, the wall mode will write all the transactions, including committed transactions, to the wall until there is a checkpoint call uh, to kind of a process the wall files and bring into the main database structure yeah. so yeah, that, I, that's true i don't know yeah, when that, 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 that checkpoint there is call is exactly. done <laughs> yeah i think I, I think that there are some configuration parameters on for instance in ascar we can we can send it to, to the sqlite uh, engine to define uh, when this checkpoints should should uh, happen, but so still, uh, I think it's possible to force it to force the writing. I think. Yeah, so, so I, 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 yeah. I think there's two things here in place. So one is uh, uh, on of the obviously upgrade path, uh, the upgrade to Ascar, uh, but the other thing is how. Thing like you identify something that is happening that we didn't notice. Um, so maybe when opening the wallet through through AFJ API, you should always run the checkpoint. Um, and two, before you run your migration, maybe are you able to open the database, run the checkpoint, and then you continue with the with the upgrades with the migration yeah i think that's but i think i think we can't like manually force the checkpoints i think it's just when you open the wallet or maybe close so close an assumption but it definitely does it when you when you open it then uh just reading the doc uh Says so the closing connection runs a checkpoint while holding SQLite block exclusive. Yeah, okay. So so a direct or explicit connect uh, close of the connection will do that, but I don't think we ever do that. I think currently no, but it will do that when you call close wallet i think then right because then you um specifically lock the wallet and close the connection to the database so so the one thing that does call close wallet i think is when you turn off biometrics on and off um so maybe just a work around maybe you can try that yeah to see if like the file size changes uh yeah uh, yeah and if I think the other 
I don't remember if when he times out, it does a close a call to the close. If you just leave the wallet open for a few for a few seconds, it will time out. Yeah. Uh, okay. For a few seconds or a few minutes? Uh, it should be a few seconds, which is almost a minute or something like that. I don't quite remember the time. Out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can also check that. Yeah. I'll uh, play around with it a bit uh, with like the, the migration script. Um, but at least the, uh, the issue like with having issues with like decrypting the wallet is now gone. So I think I just had some corrupted um, database then or something. So um, yeah, I'll hope to have this done. And then I think this is the last thing we need for it to be fully done. And actually the thing we were waiting for with releasing the next version of AFJ. So then we can finally release AFJ zero for zero. Um, yeah, we can go into it bit more in a bit um cool okay that was on bifold then anything else on bifold or the shared component stuff or uh there were issues like the how is it uh Clasio with like the issues with older android versions and the new the missing symbols and and stuff is any progress being made on that or uh so we fix all the issues with VDR. Uh, so that one is all fixed and it's working from Android 5 all the way up. Uh, I think there are issues now with other libraries. I think it was a known cred or ASCAR uh, that we need to update the same way. Okay. So I have, I have the commits in my fork on my branch. Uh, it's ready for you guys to just take over. I don't know how, because you already have a branch in progress. I don't know if you want to PR to your branch or you can just go and take the commits from my fork. That's fine. Um, I think, so is it like a fork of the Anocrats RS in the VDR repos and such? or? Uh, yes, it's a fork from you guys work on that Ooh, can you share the links I'm, I'm a bit out of the loop on exactly uh what we had on this um okay one second in the indie vdr there's a branch called Okay, so maybe it is. Okay, I need to double check. Uh, but I'll paste the link. This is where it is, the, the changes. Um, did you guys recently commit some changes? Because I thought there was a PR from uh, Barrett about it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was in his, like his brand, probably of his fork. Um, yeah. So the thing that fixed it was to use uh, another Rust version or or some other stuff also. Okay. Um, and. Do we need to apply these same patches then to uh, Anon Kretz RS and uh, Oscar or not? Uh, yeah, I think so. That's a conversation we had here. And if there is potentially a way for us to create an action that we can share among all those components, because we need consist consistency support. Yeah. OK. This is great. Thank you. I'm going to pick this up with Berend and uh, um, okay. yeah. So there's only those two commits. Uh, one of them uh, it does include GitHub action changes, 
because that's how I was testing. Uh, but happy to have a call and we can talk about it, uh, how to integrate those changes. I think I fork from very fork because there was a work in progress. That's why I, I didn't submit any PR, but we can uh, get some clarification there on how you want it back. Okay. Um, perfect. Um, do we think this needs to hold up the release of AFJ 0 for 0, or is it something we can release in a patch uh, afterwards? Uh, we won't be able to update by folk to use 0 for 0 until that one is done, right? So from Ares JavaScript perspective, go ahead. Yes, you can do a release and we can, that means the by default, we can't really pick up zero for zero. We probably pick up the next one. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, it can actually be like, the, because it's just something in the underlying libraries. It's it's mm -hmm. just like a patch we could release to the IndyVDR, Anoncrats RS, and uh, Oscar libraries without needing to do an update in AFJ, really. Um, but okay, yeah, I think doesn't that, yeah doesn't AFJ defines what are the version of those wrappers, or uh, does Bifold has to also define it? We override. Is it a peer dependency? I don't quite remember. The shared package is a dependency, um, and uh, um, the non-shared package, um, like the React Native specific, is is a dependency because you can install the Node.js and the React Native one. Um, and we have like we specified with a carrot. So if we release one dot zero dot zero, and then we release one dot zero dot one, then it will pick um, the latest package. And it will automatically be applied then. Um, so that should work. Uh, okay, I do not know. So I'll take your word for it. Um, where have my notes gone? Sorry, I changed, I changed the... Oh, sorry, I, 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 the page maybe... It's gone. It's, it's... Oh, well. Uh, can we get them back or? Oh. And do. Okay. Well. Um. <laughs> that's that's nice. I think it's in the could be in the tracks. Confidence. I... Wait, if you go up to the next like create button, is there not a drafts or? Um... Where, where is it? Is it, is it that da 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 or is it? No, no, no. Sorry, maybe it's in the bottom right. Uh, okay. Sorry. One of those dot dot dots. Last published version, or I think, but I I made all the edits. So okay, uh, let me see. Changes, few changes. Nope. I think this does the same as we did. Oh yeah, never mind. Yeah, so I think. Um. All right, that's okay. I think what we need, uh, there's a few, there's just a few things we want to, um, is uh, also copy the DB wall um, before Oscar migration updates on um, older Android versions. Uh, yeah, fix in this branch or in the VDR. Um, and need to make same changes. Oscar. All right, then we have this issue that was raised. Um, all right, I think this is the most important stuff we had written down. Um, okay. Cool. 
Awesome. Then uh, let me see anything on the other calls um, we want to discuss. Uh, okay. Um, so oh. so where, where we left off with this uh, SQLite qubits and checkpoints thing? Does bifold needs to do explicitly closing the wall, or is that is that something that AFJ is going to handle? I think as AFJ we can't really handle it easily because like it's AFJ doesn't really know a lot about the React Native environment, so I think it's better to do that in the React Native app. Um, but I yeah I think probably um, I'll look into it like with the updates and see like how it. A bit more learn about a bit more on how it works. I think what will probably be the fix here is that we're going to currently we create like one big session with Oscar, but it now supports like transactions and and everything. And we'll we are going for the next AFJ release. We want to refactor it to have more like batched transactions. So if we process a message and and in the process of it 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 goes wrong like we won't commit anything that happened during the processing of that message and but if it does like everything will be committed at the end and not like well so we have more um and i think that will probably fix this right ahead logging because we'll have like a lot more in between checkpoints okay okay uh i guess something to keep an eye on it because I, I have not noticed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because cool. I'm wondering now, now that this has been raised, I'm wondering if that is causing some, some of potentially startup issues, delays that again, maybe that right ahead log files need to be processing every time it's opening the wallet. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, I heard the Ditcom V2 uh, interrupt-a-ton, connect -a -ton went great. Um, I didn't see the demo myself, but uh, I heard there were like six companies or something that were involved in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, the last cool part is that we are not using Ditcom 2. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, I mean, PR yes. open, we need to get it fixed in AFJ also. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it, uh, is that coming to 0 for 0 or is it a future release? Future release. Basically, um, we need someone to pick up the work um, then that wants to invest the time. Like there's a lot of it is done, um, but there needs to be okay. done some work to finish it off. Okay, so so there is no one actively working on it. So then, yeah, yeah, okay. not not that not at the moment, but my my idea is to work on that in, in next month or so, because I would like to 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 have it in our in our first launch of I mean to to launch our our app with directly with Bitcoin V two. So uh, I would like to to implement it in in, in for the for the zero five zero, let's say. But before okay. before that, we we have to to work a bit on the refactoring of the wallet API, as discussed with Timo last week. But okay. it shouldn't be so hard to 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 add uh, now, especially, especially now we are using Ascar. Uh, I think we can we can mix all the concepts done here in the. In the branch, in the current branch from Sigma, and, and okay. integrated with Ascard, and yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah. So uh, we probably don't need it right away. So that timeline probably works for us as well. Um. So we we'll see how we can maybe help if possible. Cool. Thank you.
Um, okay. Um, then I think let's continue. Um, with are there anything any other things we uh, um we want to discuss uh today? I think that the the discussion we had are really valuable. Um, for me at least. So that's great. Um, maybe I have one thing. Um, let's look at the release uh, because it's been out for a long time um, and are there any things we really need to do like for me what I wanted to get fixed was the migration script in React Native um, so working on that today I hope I can wrap that up and so I think maybe there needs to be one small change in AFJ that we also copy the the wall file when um, uh, doing the migration is there anything else like what was your ID for 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 this Ariel? Can we do that in a zero four one, or can we do that in a zero five zero, or what? What's the yeah? What's the thinking behind you? I I think it's possible to do in the in in a, a zero four one if you if you want. Yes, um, but there is there is something that is uh, that is part of this PR that maybe can be important for the period of zero for zero is that um, uh, there I integrated the support of this uh, non, uh, how it's called the override, the, the, the time sub override, the time sub override in, in the Anon creds. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if, if I can, I can also probably uh, separate that and, and, and do an, an, an smaller PR uh, with only that uh, revocation of rights and time time of rights for the or we can just wait uh, to this to this uh, PR. The reason why I, I in, integrated that here is that it was easier for me to test it because uh, when I do something I want to test it <laughs> because you know this is it's good that it, this is recorded. If it's not tested, it doesn't work. You see, I mean, we didn't test the Ascar in Windows. It doesn't work. So, <laughs> so we we have to to test before. So, uh, and and now with this uh, revocation support, it was easier for me to 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 check that actually it worked. And actually, I had to do some some. Uh, Back fixes on on the anon creds RS side. So now that I know that it works, maybe I can I can separate that and and, and include it in the in another PR if you if you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably good to include it, but if we can add this soon in a in a like a yeah, probably it would be good to include it. Um, because otherwise we're going to have like checks that will fail. Well, they're actually valid. Um, if we if we include this PR into the, the, the whole PR into the zero four zero, uh, we will need also to update. Uh, well, it's it's a minor update, but we will need to update also the the, the checked interface and and the in the well the individual is, is already there. Uh, because uh, here we, I, I am changing the the issue service interface to to include also the uh, and the anon crest registry interface to include also the, the register uh, the uh, revocation registry definition and and status list. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know. It, yeah, probably good. It's to up to you if you if if you want if you want to. <laughs> To I can I can I have to update it to use the latest release of Anon Crest RS because uh, I think that once it's updated to that it, it will work and um, yeah if you want to to review it and include it, I mean the whole PR in the, in the zero four zero it's it's fine otherwise we can we can wait we can uh, wait until uh, after the the zero four zero release and and do it for a zero for one because actually it's not there is not any 
I think it will not any breaking change other than the fact that we added the methods for registering objects in the Anoncrest registry interface. Yeah, okay. Well, we can already add those. I think that's fine. If we just add those in and we just like do it like this, I think that's completely fine. Then we just say yeah. like issuance is it's like not a revocable issue. Issuance of revocable credential, or like creating um uh, creating these objects is not supported yet in any of the registry implementations, but it allows us to release zero for zero, um, but not have to make a breaking change right after. I think that's fine. Okay, then um, I'll um, give this a uh, review. Um, uh, yeah, I think that I'll give it a review and uh, leave some comments. Um, but cool, okay. Um, so revocation PR uh, merge for zero, but don't implement the Interfaces or can be checked yet. Um, future, please. Okay. Anything else? Cool. Okay. Um, cool. I think for us, like one thing we really want to fix, but we're going to do that after the initial releases is, is like still exposed support for the different um, uh, shared components. Um, because uh, Ariel, are you, you're using plain React Native in your uh, wallet app? Yes. Yes, we are using plain React Native. Yes. Okay. Well, What's the problem with, with Expo? Um, it has a different way of registering stuff. So it's, um, um, yeah, there's some issue with um, how it loads the native code. And for iOS, you can bypass it by manually registering and loading it again, I think. Um, Parent has got something working there, um, but it, that doesn't work for Android and we need to make more changes. Um, but yeah, we need to look into it a bit. Um, like they also completely, again, like changed in how it works from React Native 0 0.71, um, but it does align it more between Expo and the NUM. So we, we, may, we, we thought maybe we should just like focus on the na latest React Native version for, for this, but then we lose, like we drop a lot of the older supported React Native versions. Um, and um, yeah, or you need to support both, but it's like, it's kind of a mess. If you also look at, you have some of the, the um, open source things, it's, um, uh, Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's just migrated. But like, basically, this was like a thousands line file with like, if React Native 0 0.66 or if 0 0.67 and then like all different behavior for all of the React Native versions, which is a bit of an annoyance. Um, but yeah, just something in how it loads it is different. So you you want to fix this before the 0 for 0? No, 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 no. We want to add it. We want to do it as like a future patch or a, a okay. update to the. No, no, we shouldn't hold it up. Um, it's just like, um, I think the easiest way to get started, um, with building a wallet is Expo and just being able to add to dependencies and and getting started. I think that that it would be great, and I think uh will uh. Uh, majorly improved experience of getting started with AFJ in a mobile uh, environment. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So you, you you see you see that, that there are there are plenty of people asking in the Discord channel, for instance, they are asking about that. So yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. So and what, the, what about the, the, the demo? Is it, is it fixed right now? The, the CLI. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Alice and, Fa and Faber yeah. demo. I made a fix here. I think that. I haven't okay. seen that. So it's, yeah. Uh, it's not fully, I think there's issues again. We're with the lib SSL. Not sure what's happening here. Maybe because the. the... Well, but, but now we can, I think uh, we, we can now downgrade to Ubuntu 20, right? Because Beren uh, already has already done the, 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 the fix in the Anon Chris array. So when we, now we can, we ah. can do it. Okay. And that's released. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Could so, you yeah, make a PR maybe. for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will do it. Yeah. Awesome. We'll do it today. Okay. Then, um, yeah, I think that would be great um, because then this PR fixes the the CLI uh, demo and also makes some change to the checked um, thing. Basically, what was broken is well quite a lot um <laughs> so like <laughs> we weren't creating a um link secret yet um and we were calling import on the um we're also using like still soft instead of indie but we were calling import without um overwrite and we called create key which would already exist and then it would throw an error um so it now uh, imports the key and it overrides it, so it 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 won't um, uh, error. And it works with both um, checked and indie now. Right. Yeah, I think that's most of the changes I did. Oh yeah, that's maybe an interesting one. Um, I did change it to Oscar uh, by default because I don't know where that changes these things are related to checked because um if we want to do a checked uh end-to-end uh, -end exchange um between Faber and alice both sides need to be using anon credits for s um and there's also asker um question is do we want to keep supporting in the sdk in the cli demo like is there a good reason to do it one side with asker other side with in the sdk or can we just like start using Ascar in the demo and leverage all the new features that are available. Yeah, for me, we, we can just use Ascar because actually the, the, the goal of using both was just to, to demonstrate that it worked, but now we, we know it worked, <laughs> we can just move on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we have some tests, I think, still that run like where Ascar is the issuer and in the SDK, the exactly. holder, or like uh, uh, vice versa. Okay, but then I think then then that's that's great. Then we can leverage more of like the new features and we don't have to worry about what's... Uh, oh yeah, that's like I removed this one. It's So it's now always Oscar. Um, cool, okay. That's the end of the time uh, of the meeting. Thanks everyone for... Joining again, uh, small group, but good discussion. Um, and we'll continue um, next week. I think Kareem um, is going to give a presentation. I, I'm not sure if next week, um, but on like ARIs and other standards and how it relates and, and, and that stuff. And I think we're also still getting a demo from Dev, Dave from checked on like the checked integration. Um, and yeah, maybe the wallet API redesign from Ariel uh, when time permits, but- I, I, I don't know, I don't know next week, but probably. <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. coming weeks uh, somewhere. <laughs> uh, just yeah. a quick thought, maybe a quick agenda item for next time is I've noticed that the AFJ interop tests are not running complete. Uh, on AIP 2.0. So it would be interesting to to have that interop uh, test enabled so we can track what features has been developed or not. 
Yeah, good okay. point. I think uh, 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 Stephen also opened an issue about it. Uh, we need to uh, we need to look into that again. I think the API is stable enough now. So uh, yeah, either me or Ariel is going to take a look at it. I think. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Cool. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Goodbye.